the general principle here is that it, any part of this could fail and the car will keep driving. So you could have cameras fail, you could have uh, power circuits fail, you could have one of the Tesla full, full self-driving computer chips fail, car keeps driving. Uh, the probability of, the, of this computer failing is substantially lower than somebody losing consciousness. That's, that's the key metric, at least in order of magnitude. It, 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 at first, it seems improbable. How could it be that Tesla, who has never designed a chip before, would design the best chip in the world? But that is objectively what has occurred. Not, not best by a small margin, best by a huge margin. It's in the cars right now. All Teslas being produced right now have this computer. We switched over from the NVIDIA solution for SNX about a month ago, and we switched, switched over uh, Model 3 about 10 days ago. All cars being produced have, the, have all the hardware necessary, compute and otherwise, for full self-driving. I'll say that again. All Tesla cars being produced right now have everything necessary for full self-driving. All you need to do is improve the software. And later today, you will drive the cars with the development version of the improved software, and you will see for yourselves. Questions for Pete? Yep. Like the, the, the strategy here, and it, this, this started uh, you know, basically three, a little over three years ago, was uh, design and build a computer that is fully op optimized and aiming for full self-driving, then write software that is designed to work specifically on that computer and get the most out of that computer. So you have tailored hardware uh, that, is, that is a master of one trade, self-driving. Um, the NVIDIA is a great company, but they have many customers. And so when, as, as, they, as they apply their resources, they need to uh, do a generalized solution. Um, I, we care about one thing, self-driving. Um, so that it was designed to do that incredibly well. The software is also designed to run on that hardware incredibly well. Uh, and the combination of the software and the hardware, I think, is unbeatable. What we're going to explain to you today is that LiDAR is, is a fool's errand. And, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. <laughs> doomed. Expensive, expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad. Well, now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous. <laughs> You'll see. The, the, the thing that's, I think, a very powerful, sustainable advantage for us is the fleet. Nobody has the fleet. Those weights are constantly being updated and improved uh, based on billions of miles driven. Um, Tesla has 100 times more cars with uh, the full self-driving hardware than anyone, everyone else combined. Um, you know, we, we have, uh, by the end of this quarter, we'll have 500,000 cars with the, the full eight camera setup, 12 ultrasonics. Um, some of them will still be on hardware too, uh, but we still have the data gathering ability. Um, and then by a year from now, uh, we'll have over a million cars with full self-driving computer hardware, everything. Yeah. Hey. So we have Android. It's just a massive data advantage. It's similar to like you know how like the Google search engine has a massive advantage because people use it, and people the people are programming effectively program Google with their queries and their results. The, the simulator we have a, a quite a good simulation too, um, but it, it's just, uh, it just does not capture the long tail of weird things that happen in the real world. If the simulation fully captured the real world, well, I mean that would be proof that we're living in a simulation. I think. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't. I wish, <laughs> but it, it, simulations do not capture the real world. Uh, they don't. The real world is really weird and messy. Um, you need the you need the cars on the road. So really, the, the variety that I'm seeing in the data coming from the fleet is just uh, crazy with respect to what we have in the simulator. We have a really good simulator. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I mean, I think like simulation, you're fundamentally uh, grading your grading your own homework. So you you, you know you, you, if you know that you're going to simulate it, okay, you can definitely solve for it. But as Andre is saying, you don't know what you don't know. The world is very weird and has. Uh, millions of corner cases, uh, 
And if, you, if, if somebody can pr produce a self-driving simulation that accurately matches reality, that in itself would be in a monumental achievement of, of, of human capability. They can't. There's no way. Yeah. Um, ev everyone's training the network all the time is what it amounts to. Whether the whether auto autopilot is on or off, uh, the network is being trained. Every mile that's driven uh, for the car that's hardware to or above is training the network. Yeah. I mean, the crazy thing is the network is predicting paths it can't even see with incredibly high accuracy. It can't see around the corner, but it's, it, it, but it's saying the probability of that curve is extremely high, and so that's the path. And it nails it. You will see that in the cars today. Uh, uh, we do have a major program at Tesla, which we don't have enough time to talk about today, called Dojo. That's uh, a super powerful training computer. Uh, the, the goal of Dojo will be to be able to take in vast amounts of data and train at a video level um, and do unsupervised massive training of vast amounts of video with the, the Dojo program, Dojo computer. But that's for another day. This Lighter is uh, lame. Lighter is lame. <laughs> lame. That my second question is, if that is true, what happens to the rest of the industry that's building their autonomy solutions on LiDAR? They're all going to dump LiDAR, that's my prediction. Mark my words. Um, I should point out that I don't actually super hate LiDAR as much as it may sound, um, but at SpaceX, uh, uh, SpaceX Dragon uses LiDAR to navigate to the space station and dock. Not only that, we, the, SpaceX developed its own LiDAR from scratch to do that, and I spearheaded that effort personally, because in that scenario, LiDAR makes sense, and in cars, it's friggin' stupid. It's expensive and unnecessary, and as Andre was saying, once you solve vision, it, it's, it's worthless. So you have expensive hardware that's worthless on the car. The, we do have a forward radar, which, which is low cost and is helpful, especially for occlusion situations. So if there's like fog or dust or, or you know, snow, the radar can see through that. If you're going to use active photon generation, don't use visible wavelength. Because once you, with, with passive optical, you've taken care of all visible wavelength stuff. You want, if you, you, you want to use a wavelength that is occlusion penetrating like radar. So, so LiDAR is just active photon generation in the visual spectrum. If you're going to do active photon generation, do it outside the visual spectrum in the radar, in, in the radar spectrum. So like at 3.8 millimeters versus 400 to 700 nanometers, you're going to have much better occlusion penetration. Um, and that's why we have a forward radar. Um, and then we also have uh, ultras 12 ultrasonics for, for near field information, um, in addition to the eight cameras and, and, and the, the forward radar. Um, you only need the radar in the forward direction because that's the only direction you're going real fast. So, that, so I mean, we've gone over this multiple times, like, are we sure we have the right sensor suite? Should we add anything more? No. There's, there's actually, um, there, there are a number of important signals, as Andre was saying. So um, lane lines are one of those things, but uh, one of the, mo the most important signals is drive space. So what, what, what is drivable space and what is not drivable space? Um, and uh, what, what actually really matters the most is, is drivable space more than lane lines. Uh, and, the, and the prediction of drivable space is extremely good. Um, and I think especially after this upcoming winter will be incredible. It'll, it'll, it's, it's, it's like it will be like, how could it possibly be that good? That's crazy. Uh, yeah. there's, there's three steps to self-driving. You know, there's being feature complete. Then there's being feature complete to the degree that w where, where we think that uh, the, the person in the car does not need to pay attention. And then there's uh, uh, being at a reliability level where we've also convinced regulators that that is true. So it's kind of like, there's kind of like three levels. We expect to be se feature complete in self-driving this year. Um, and we expect uh, to be confident enough from our standpoint to say that w we think people do not need to touch the wheel, look out of the window sometime probably around I don't know, second quarter of next year. Um, and then we start to expect to get regulatory approval, at least in some jurisdictions, for that towards the end of next year. That's, that, that's a roughly the timeline that I, that I expect things to go on. And um, probably for, for trucks, uh, the platooning will be approved by regulators uh, before uh, anything else. And you can have, like, maybe if you're a long haul 
doing long haul freight, uh, you, you could have one driver in the front and then have four um, semis uh, trailing behind in a platooning manner. And I think that probably the regulators will be quicker to approve that than other things. So to have hundreds of thousands going to millions of lane changes and zero accidents uh, is, uh, I think, a, a great achievement by the Tesla team. Yeah. If to, in order to have a self-driving car or robo-taxi, you really need redundancy throughout the vehicle at the hardware level. Um, so starting in, I believe it was October 2016, uh, all cars made by Tesla have redundant uh, power steering. So we have redundant motors on the power steering. So any one failure of the, if, if, a, if the motor fails, the car can still steer. Um, all of the power and data lines have redundancy. So you can sever any given power line or any data line, and the car will keep driving. The uh, auxiliary power system, uh, even if the main pack, you lose complete power in the main pack, the car is capable of steering and braking uh, using the auxiliary power system. So you can completely lose the main pack and, and the, 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 the car is safe. Um, the, the whole system, is, for, from a hardware standpoint, has been designed to, for, uh, to be a robo-taxi since basically October 2016. Um, so when we rolled out hardware, uh, Autopilot version two. Um, just to give you a sense of how hard it is to, to do this. Um, unless it's designed in, it's, it, it's not worth it. So we've gone through the future of self-driving, um, where it's clear it's, it's hardware, it's vision, and then there's a lot of software, and there's a, the, the software problem here should not be minimized. It's a, it's a massive software problem uh, that, that uh, yeah managing vast amounts of data, training against the data, uh, how do you control the car based on the vision? It's a very difficult software problem. So going after, going over just like Tesla, Tesla master plan, obviously we've made a bunch of forward-looking statements, as they call it. Um, <laughs> um, and, um, but let's go through some of our other forward-looking statements that we've made. You know, way back, when we created the company, we said we'd build the Tesla Roadster. They said it was impossible, and that, and that even if we did build it, nobody would buy it. Um, this is like universal opinion. <laughs> was that building an electric car was extremely dumb and would fail. Um, I agree with them that probability of failure was high, but, but that this was important. So we built the Tesla Roadster, um, got it went to production in 2008, um, and shipping that car, it's now a collector's item. Then I said so we built a more affordable car with the, the Model S, we did that. Um, again, we were told that's impossible. Um, I was called a fraud and a liar, and it was not gonna happen, this is all untrue. Okay, famous last words. Now, is we, we, we went to production with the Model S in 2012, uh, exceeded all expectations. There is still, in 2019, no car that can compete with the Model S of 2012. It's seven years later. Still waiting. <laughs> uh, so we'd build a, 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 um, a, an affordable car, maybe highly affordable, is affordable, more affordable. Uh, with, with the Model 3. We built the Model 3, we're in production. Um, I said we'd get over 5,000 cars a week for Model 3. Uh, at this point, 5,000 cars a week is, is a walk in the park for us. It's not even hard. Um, I said we'd do large-scale solar, which we did through the Solar City acquisition, um, and that we'd develop and deploy the solar roof, um, which is going really well. We're now on version three of the solar tile roof. Uh, and we expect to spool our production of the solar tile roof significantly later this year. Um, I, I have it on, um, my, on, on my house, and it's great. Um, and I, I, I said we'd make the uh, power wall and the power pack, and we made the power wall and power pack. In fact, the, the power pack is um, now deployed in massive grid-scale utility systems around the world, um, in, including the, the, the largest operating battery projects in the world that at uh, above 100 megawatts. Um, and in the next, or probably by next, in the next year, two years at the most, we expect to have a giga, gigawatt scale battery project uh, completed. So all these things, 
I said we'd do them. We did it. I said we'd do it. We did it. We're going to do the robo taxi thing too. Only criticism, and it's a fair one, and sometimes I'm not on time. <laughs> but I get it done, and the Tesla team gets it done. <laughs>